Alright, hello citizens of the Nigerverse. It is Nigel here once again, and this is going to be another wrestling review. So, oh, um, we've looked at ECW One Night Stand 2005. I've uh, we've kind of been on ECW binge the last couple weeks, but we looked at ECW One Night Stand 2005, which was really more of the reunion uh, show when it came to ECW, kind of a celebration of classic ECW. And then we looked at ECW One Night Stand 2006, which felt more of a new era being ushered in. Whether or not it was a good era, uh, uh, um, uh, remained to be seen, at least at the time, uh, with hindsight we know, uh, not really. But uh, kind of ushering in a new era, that ECW is back, back in, uh, at least through uh, WWE's lens. But is it better than ever? Her, uh, her, um, we, he would find out soon enough, uh, but I figured, uh, her, let's keep it going, and at least, uh, one, at least for one more, I figured, or why not look at the inaugural episode of ECW on TV once again, and so, um, uh, if you remember, or I mentioned prior to, uh, ECW One Night Stand 2006, it was announced that the ECW brand would be revived, and would now uh, and would now be under the WE umbrella, uh, uh, as it were. So we had things like um, like the event of ECW One Night Stand 2006, and we had ECW wrestlers interacting with the other two brands. And but now they're on their own show. Oh, how did it go? Let's find out. Uh, as always, I'm not professional. Not a professional wrestling viewer and analyst. Just a man who enjoys a good time. And eh, I, I didn't really have that good as I'm watching this. Like, like not like absolutely horrid stuff. Just kind of mostly a bit flat. Uh, at, um, if it were like, like definitely you can tell. Oh, compared to the original ECW, things are things are different now. Uh, granted, I didn't grow up watching ECW. Uh, by the time I, well, honestly, by the time I was even conscious enough to remember memories and stuff, ECW was long gone. On and uh, I didn't grow up watching the original ECW. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> oh, oh, all right, but I didn't grow up watching the original ECW. By the time I really got into wrestling uh, in like 2008 and stuff. Uh, ECW was firmly under the WWE umbrella. In fact, they had like the new logo and everything. Plus, um, th this is when WWE rolled out the whole HD, the, uh, the HD he, uh, presentation and everything for all their shows, all three shows of Raw, SmackDown, and ECW. Who, uh, everything was in HD now, and I remember they made a big deal about that and how everything's uh, really in HD. He and uh, it wouldn't be that long after that things would go PG. He throwing even more of a bucket of water onto the ECW uh, umbrella, uh, but um, but even with this inaugural episode, you can tell things are definitely different. And uh, and uh, and uh, at first, uh, when I was looking for this episode to watch. Uh, I actually was able to find it on Peacock, which is nice. Uh, nice. But what I found, uh, uh, technically, this is his at least list on Peacock as the second ECW episode, and I was confused about that. Uh, and then I realized, oh, that first episode that they're talking about, the quote unquote first episode, was the WWE first ECW special segment confrontation, and that they did prior to One Night Stand. But and um. Now, I debated whether or not throwing that in here as well, oh, but ultimately I decided not to because it's not really the maiden voyage per se. It's more so them loading up the ship uh, with the cargo, but uh, no, this is like the first real episode of WWE's ECW. Uh, this is like the real maiden voyage. Uh, it's so... I decided I'll only stick to this episode. So, oh, uh, well, further ado, let's get into it. Uh, so, if you've seen reviews like this before from me, then you kind of already know how this works. Uh, if you haven't, I'm going to be talking about uh, each match or like each segment uh, when it comes to stuff like this and talking about what I like and what I disliked about each uh, match and segment and stuff. And the reason I say not really the best time is because sadly there's not really a whole lot here. 
or, uh, or um, uh, oh, only about 41 minutes at least for run time. I, mean, I imagine with like commercials and stuff, it'd be about an hour or so. But, but um, yeah, not really. Otherwise, not really a whole lot here. Or, uh, or, uh, starts off them kind of recapping uh, one night stand, which had only happened a couple days prior to this. It's, and then we kick off with Paul Heyman and um, uh, and uh, at and uh, Rob Van Dam. He calls Rob Van Dam out to the ring uh, and uh, congratulates him winning W Championship. Presents him with the ECW World Title. And uh, RVD decides he's going to hold both titles. It was the ECW title? He talks about how much it means to him and stuff like that. But he keeps the WWE title because it spins. Fair enough, I guess. As, and I, I know that was one of the criticisms for like this version of the WWE title, but but um, yeah, that's maybe a topic for another time. I'm uh, I'm uh, but. Uh, then Edge is invited to the show by Paul Heyman. Edge is the number one contender, so he's going to be facing Rob Van Dam at Vengeance. And so Edge comes out, says he respects uh, RVD, saying he can't wait hate to battle him for the title. Oh, and uh, he talks about like the comparisons for them, how they both won Money in the Bank. The first two winners of the Money in the Bank, Edge won in 2005, uh, RVD won in 2006 and how they both cashed in to win uh, championship gold. And ironically enough, even more ironically that it wasn't even brought up, they both cashed in on John Cena, which is uh, crazy to think about. Oh, and uh, Ed, Edge's uh, cash-in also happened that same year. So Cena got cashed in on twice within the same year. Edge cashed in at New Year's Revolution. Uh, RVD cashed in at uh, One Night Stand. But, but um... Yeah, so Edge saying he respects RVD, he uh, shakes his hand and then spears him, him because Edge remembers he's supposed to be the heel essentially. He, uh, he so Edge and Lita are escaping through the crowd and then and John Cena shows up. He said he was gonna show up on the Raw and shows in the recap. John Cena said he was gonna show up and uh, show up he did. It uh it uh then he brawls with Edge for a little bit and then um and. Uh, and uh, RVD gets some shots in, and then Cena and RVD kind of have have a little scuffle going on as well. Uh, and so Edge blindsides RVD from behind, uh, and then Cena, as he's going after Edge, decks Paul Heyman. And and honestly, he uh, knowing what we know now, the power of hindsight, Cena, who's def who's definitely he very much like a WWE guy, decking Paul Heyman in the f the uh, face and. Uh, the representative, as they call him on like commentary and stuff, the representative of ECW, is more symbolic than it has any right to be. It's not just uh, a quite a bit of symbolism, but also, I'd argue, a pretty scary premonition. But, uh, nevertheless, so that head end, ends up, uh, and then uh, uh, Edge essentially gets away, and then Paul Heyman, and afterward, or it's, um, yeah, Paul Heyman afterward, or it's, uh, talks about how the ECW guys are gonna show up uh, as he's like you know hyping up the ECW guys, the ECW locker room, um, and uh, uh, so yeah they're gonna show up on a uh, Raw. Uh, but uh, then next up we get into our first official match, and uh, it's a it's a good one. It's the Sandman versus the Zombie. Yes, you heard me right, the Zombie. He, a guy shows up. Up in like zo in zombie getup essentially. He has like the torn clothing and uh, and the makeup and stuff. He like growls. Those man, those, it's crazy. That's not uh, the last time the WWE would have zombies. He's uh, play a role in one of the matches and it ended up being kind of eh. And uh, the zombie is there to make fun of the fact that ECW's on sci-fi. Sure. Or her, uh, her, and then Sandman and shows up, gets his entrance in with the beer, or busts himself o open, and uh, and uh, then bell rings. Sandman just, well, well, actually, Sandman starts with the kendo stick shots the zombie. Then the bell rings. The Sandman just keeps the kendo stick shot and hits the white Russian leg sweep, which is just the Russian leg sweep with the kendo stick, it, uh, to get hit the win. And, and they po and Sandman does the celebration with the beer and everything. They they point out Sandman uh, drinking a second beer was longer than the match itself, and they're not entirely wrong about that. Uh, and then uh, just chasing the zombie up to the uh, up through 
through the ramp, uh, through the entranceway. Hey, and then we meet uh, Kelly, he, who is an exhibitionist. And uh, uh, and uh, if you don't know what an exhibitionist is, it's pretty much someone who um, reveals themselves. Um, reveals the goods, if you will. Oh, well, and she says she's uh, he's uh, going to host a special exhibition for the ECW crowd tonight. Uh, interesting. Uh, and, uh, th and they do like a little mini recap of uh, Taz choking out Jerry Lawler at uh, One Night Stand. And then we get into the next match, which is Kurt Angle versus Just Incredible. Well, uh, well, uh, this is when Kurt Angle was the wrestling machine. And then we saw like a glimpse of that at One Night Stand as he was battling Randy Orton and uh, facing and Just Incredible. Well, uh, and Kurt Angle well, essentially dominates pretty much, um, pretty much this entire match. Uh, uh, Justin barely gets any offense, and Kurt Angle doing a lot of grapples, a lot of like he throws and stuff, of, uh, of, and chokes out uh, Justin Incredible as well, hell with the rear naked choke, and then Kurt Angle responds to Randy Orton's challenge. So Randy Orton, who lost to Kurt Angle at One Night Stand, challenges Kurt Angle. To a rematch at a vengeance as well. Oh, uh, also Angle essentially accepts the challenge, and and um, and uh, it's pointed out in commentary that chokes looks like uh, the, like the one Kurt Angle did, and the Taz mission are allowed on ECW television. And uh, but here it'll be W rules, W match, match and stuff. And Angle said it doesn't matter to him, him as he accepts Randy Orton's challenge. And, and then uh, Heyman, uh, afterwards, uh, Paul Heyman then announces is a extreme battle royal, a 10-man extreme battle royal that weapons are legal, well, and the winner will be facing John Cena at Vengeance. Uh, Heyman's still upset over everything that happened, so, um, oh, um, so he announces the battle royal, saying weapons will be allowed. But I mean, battle royals, there are usually no disqualification anyway. Hey, uh, Hey, weapons are usually allowed anyway. For example, the 2001 Royal Rumble, where weapons were used pretty frequently in that Rumble. Oh, but they put over in commentary how something like this had never been uh, done before, or uh, or, uh, or they'd never done uh, an uh, extreme battle royal like that before with weapons and stuff. Uh, even though, oh, again, the Royal Rumble was essentially like a large battle royal and that has weapons in it. But sure, uh, why not? Uh, and then. And Kelly Kelly, he shows up again. Or actually, she's just called Kelly. She isn't Kelly Kelly just yet. Yes, uh, Kelly is the future Kelly Kelly. He, uh, from humble, somewhat horny beginnings. Uh, but uh, Kelly, he um, he's going to exhibition for us uh, uh, next up. And then, and um, and uh, uh, after her. Uh, her words we see a vampire yes we've seen a zombie and now a vampire that vampire of course being the future kevin thorne uh who would become uh, a bigger part of ecw tv going forward or uh, or, uh so interesting and uh and kevin thorne earned, uh earned the former mordecai uh i uh who was like the um who was uh, i forget the exact word for it it um it but uh uh, he's here for the first time since being uh, Mordecai. He shows up here, and now he's a vampire. Or, uh, or, um, or so, yay! Hey, and then, uh, and uh, uh, we get Ed Kelly Kelly doing her exhibition. Uh, she takes off her shirt, she takes off her skirt, and then she like fails on her bra. Uh, a nice exhibition, so she kind of lowers it and then like lifts it up. You know, when they lower the straps and lift it up, but her hands are over the uh, the goods, and then that's uh, that's about it. Thanks for coming, Kelly. <laughs> but uh, then in our main events, we have uh, Tommy Dreamer, her uh, her Sabu, Balls of Honey, Little Guido, Al Snow, Danny Doring, Roadkill, Stevie Richards, Tommy. Um, Tony Mamaluke, Big Show, and Big Guido in the 10-man Extreme Battle Royal. Well, uh, well, uh, they have the weapons out there, air, air out here, and then uh, Big Show, and then throughout the match, Big Show, like, um, clears everybody out, uh, and then, 
and, and uh, everybody starts getting up on Big Show. Oh, it doesn't really work. Al Snow's first to go, and then uh, and Doring's thrown out. Uh, then Stevie Richards, then Road Kill, then Balls Mahoney. He uh, he um, he sued Big Show pretty much like Clearing House, like being the most dominant man in the future. Another uh, unfortunate sign of things to come, um, and that and um. And, and eventually, he, uh, Dreamer's thrown out and, uh, actually thrown through the table that Sabu set up earlier. Or, and then, um, and, uh, Little Guido, oh, aka Nunzio, and Tony Mamalu try ganging up on the Big Show. That doesn't really work out. Big Show takes them out, eliminates them. Then, he quickly gets rid of Big Guido, which is kind of disappointing. I think, like, the, him being, uh, two big guys, he's, uh... As, uh, as, uh, I do wish uh, things were a little bit more even keeled, but uh, I think this is pretty much the put over kind of Big Show, oh, but not really because uh, then as Big Show is taking out Guido, who oh, Sabu, who uh, who um, who uh, who hits the running chair shot, uh, going off the chair and then hitting uh, another chair shot, go like. This onto the Big Show's back while Guido's holding on to his arm in order to eliminate him. So Sabu wins the um, wins the uh, battle royal there. Here, so oh yeah, yeah, and then uh, things pretty much end from there. So Sabu uh, will go on to face John Cena at Vengeance. But yeah, that was the inaugural episode. Um, interesting direction how they took things. We see some old like some ECW originals. And some new, but otherwise, not really a whole lot, like, going on. Like, not really a lot of stuff to, like, write home about where it's like, Oh, you definitely gotta check that out. Uh, I mainly checked it out just mainly to see. Mostly out of curiosity, but otherwise, sadly, not really a whole lot going on. Which is disappointing. Like, like this definitely didn't feel like an ECW show. This definitely felt more like a WWE show. Oh, and the fact that at, uh... At both Kurt Angle and Big Show got hot wins in their matches. I think pretty much said all it needed to say. He mixed with the opening segments and uh, with like Edge and John Cena and Rob Van Dam and Paul Heyman. Uh, and uh, definitely signs of things to come. Um, and and he, it's crazier that Cena, even with these actions, still didn't turn heel. Like, like um, it seemed like that might have been direction to go with not just uh, Cena uh, and his actions at One Night Stand, but then uh, House, but then uh, kind of this segment with Cena straight up decking Paul Heyman, and yet he still didn't turn heel. Oh, uh, what are you going to do? But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for this review. Uh, if if I had to pick the strongest and weakest match of the night, there's only like three of them. Uh, since, since there's three of them, I guess I'll just rank them uh, in terms of like best to, uh, best to worst, I guess, or favorite to least favorite, um, it, uh, for favorite, I guess I'd probably go with Kern Angle, just incredible, whole, uh, whole ang angle, um, angle, definitely a machine in there, and, uh, and um, working around just incredible, getting put over. Then the battle royal was kind of eh. The weapon uh, had weapons, but otherwise it was just eh. And then uh, Sandman and uh, the zombie was kinda, was really much of a nothing burger, like a squash match. match. But um, yeah, not really a whole lot of things of interest going on. Like uh, so, the inaugural whole episode, the new direction ECW is taken, uh, doesn't start with a bang, but more kind of a whimper, honestly. He, like, hey, I think the thing is they want to have the debut episode of ECW, but they're still very much in the ECW versus uh, Raw and SmackDown kind of feud, so they had to try to, uh, they had to try to build the show around that, but otherwise, it just, things just kind of fell flat, unfortunately. Hey, but, uh, that's just me. But, nevertheless, that is going to do it for this review. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you did, please do me a favor. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, turn on post notifications so you know every time I, vote, I upload a video, so you can see as it drops. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts on um, on ECW, on this uh, debut episode, how WWE did ECW, your thoughts on all of it, as well as this review. Did you like this, like, uh, this review? Who, um... 
uh, yeah, uh, let me know in the comments. And uh, if you haven't already, go check out my reviews of ECW's One, One Night Stand 2005 and 2006. And I'm thinking about putting them together in like a little mini compilation video like I often do with events uh, such as that, uh, which kind of like are related to each other in those regards. So I might do that as well here. -er. But um, yeah, otherwise, thank you all so much for watching. And I will see you guys later. Peace.